This video is not about how to organize your photos. There's plenty of uh, resources out there on the internet that'll tell you exactly how and which strategies you can try and employ. This video is simply about how do I periodically find and delete or truncate the largest assets uh, within my photos application. My name is Dion Mitten and I fly seaplanes for a living. It takes me to some really beautiful locations like this and this and this and this. If you're anything like me, you end up with 20,000 or more photos and videos on your iOS device. And the reason for that is because I don't regularly clean my iPhone. And the reason for that is because Apple makes it really difficult. The Photos app on the iOS devices, the UI allows you to view your photos by albums or sorted by date and time and association, anything but by file size. Okay, okay, let me qualify that. This is a limitation of the Photos app on iOS 13 and before. Now, if you were to upgrade to iOS 14 or 15, then Apple has introduced a sort feature by which you could select the sort criteria. Now, I'm not a big fan of upgrading the OS just because of one or two features, because we all know uh, what happens with the OS in terms of general degradation of performance, especially on older hardware devices. The reason why it's very handy to be able to sort the files by size is let's say I have 20,000 files, which we now know I do, and I'm not quite ready to get rid of 10,000 of them. I just want to get rid of, perhaps I need to clear up five gigs or 10 gigs or two gigs or 100 meg. So ideally I want to find the largest files, inspect them and see whether I'm ready to delete or whether I want to delete them off of my device. So having a sort by file size capability is tremendously helpful and that's really all I need to do. Now, these devices have limited memory. I don't care if you have the latest iPhone 13 or a previous model, memory is always a limited resource and you will run out of memory. So when you end up with more than 10,000 or 20,000 photos on a device like this, everything starts to become very, very inefficient. The reason for that is part due to the fact that the iOS or the operating system, any operating system for that matter, does not perform well when it has to deal with sizable numbers of, of items within a directory or a subdirectory structure. In this case, you can argue, well, iOS might under the cover organize this as a hash DB or a cleverly thought out uh, binary structure or a binary tree, whatever the mechanism they use, they still have to manage 20,000 photos. So when I pull up another app, uh, let's say a social media app or a photo sharing app, and I try and share a photo that comes off of the photos on my device. Well, guess what? It has to read, index, cache 20,000 photos before it can display it to that application. So all of the interaction that happens with those photo assets, whether it's another application, whether it's exporting it to your device, whether it's just interacting with it because you're trying to view and, and, and find the entertainment, it becomes very, very inefficient. Now, if you look at some of the other uh, photo sharing applications, like for example, the messaging apps, they all have a mechanism by which you can inspect and view the size of the attachments, meaning the size of the photos or the size of the videos. And then you can manage these assets by sorting them by size. While the good old photos app does not have a sort by size or by file size feature. So a quick search on the internet reveals that there's many people with many ideas on how to do this. Basically, it all relies on offloading the data off of your device onto a third party application on your notebook or your MacBook. All these methods rely typically on a third party application, third party application integration. So somebody wants you to buy yet another app to install so that they can look at your data, can monetize your data. It's just not smart. So in simple terms, I needed to figure out a way to easily get rid of the photos that I do not want to carry on my mobile device, whether it's uh, this iOS uh, or the iPad OS. Either way, it's a cumbersome process as we now know with the Photos application. 
So here are the three high level steps of what I do. First of all, I back up the data from the iOS device to my MacBook, to my external storage. Then I go through a process of selecting the largest files or the most duplicated files that I want to delete. I go ahead and delete them off of the device and then I reboot my device simply so that it can get a fresh start. It can reinitialize the file system. It can reinitialize and or cache the images, the thumbnails. Anytime you perform a bulk delete action like this where I'm going to delete uh, gigabytes of data off of the device, it's always a good idea to restart the device, meaning a power cold start powering off the device and powering it back on. The reason for the power cycle is it allows the operating system to boot up fresh, re-index, re-cache, re-thumbnail cache, do what it has to do to rescan the file system, rescan the photos uh, subsystem or the file system or the data structure that they use internally to manage that, and then optimize the memory usage based on the latest scan or the most up-to-date view of the file system. So the method that I'm presenting here utilizes the Apple ecosystem entirely. I've adapted my creative workflow to fully utilize the Apple ecosystem. So from the iOS devices or the iPad OS to the Mac OS, I'm doing everything on Apple. So if you have a mixed environment uh, or a hybrid environment, this method might not work as well, but you might find the concepts still applicable and you might find the tools in the Windows or the other operating system environments suitable so that you can still do this kind of thing. So step number one, to create a backup of the photos because I'm going to go into a delete step and I want to make sure that I have a, a reliable backup. So it's a two step process. Number one, back up the assets. Number two, verify that the backup is good. Remember, whenever you take a backup, you always want to make sure before you actually delete any assets, you always want to make sure that the backup is actually good. And you want to do that by means of running a, doing a dry restore run or just inspecting, doing a random spot check to make sure the biggest assets are there, that are viewable. Uh, and I'll show you how I do this on the Mac. So the built-in application that I'll be using is the image capture application. It ships as part of the standard Mac OS operating system distro. There's no third-party app involved and it's actually quite a simple process. And the reason why I'm using the image capture app is that it solves all three steps of what needs to happen here. Creating the backup, finding the largest files and deleting and deduping them and then also clearing the memory of the iOS device or the iPad OS device to attached to the system. So I never interact with the iOS or the iPad OS device. I do everything from the MacBook. Again, if you're like me, I use, of course I use the MacBook Pro, but I also have a ton of these external drives. Now, these are five terabyte, two terabyte, one terabyte. I've, I have a handful of these uh, Samsung, they are the one, one terabyte uh, SSDs. They're extremely fast. They have a nice USB 3 interface and they are very light. They're not as fragile, of course, like the spinning media, the magnetic media, because there are no moving parts in this. So I have a handful. I have about 10 ter terabytes of this, meaning I have 10 of these. I have way too many of these, these disks and we all do because we have to back up our data somewhere. So I manage my risk of losing data by spreading my backups across multiple device types. In other words, I have some data on SSD and I have some data on magnetic or spindle drives. And we can go into a little bit of the, um, the strategy that I use. I've taken a lot of this strategy from what we would do in the big data world where you categorize your data, uh, data at rest versus data in transit, and then you design a solution that ideally matches the backup or the archival requirement for the data in that state. Uh, but that's a whole different video. This holds about seven, uh, five terabyte disks. So there's 30 terabytes right in here. I can travel with this. It goes into my carry-on baggage quite easily. And it makes for a way that I can transport my data if I need to have it available when I travel. If you like it, that's my method. It works fairly well. Until I find the next method, I'm going to stick with this one because it's the most efficient method 
for deleting, managing duplicates, and creating backups of my photo archive on this device that I've come across recently. Uh, I'll stick with this method. I might revise it in the future, but that's what works for me now. Uh, I hope you found this video useful. If you're somewhat like me and you face perhaps a similar kind of a scenario with managing and cleaning up the data on your mobile device, your iOS or iPadOS mobile device, you might want to give this method a try. It works well for me. I've shown you how I do that. And if you find it useful, maybe you want to drop a comment below. Uh, maybe you want to like the video. If not, that's quite okay as well. I would love to hear your solution and how you manage your out of storage problem on your mobile devices. Thanks for watching. Come back soon. I'll have more aviation videos soon.